How did you think about the Lockheed Lounge when you made it, and how do you think about it now? Um, if I start backwards, I, thinking about it now, I mean, it was very weird when it was brought on stage and, and when we started talking about it. It really does feel like another life, you know, when I see that piece. It, I almost uh, look at it, not almost, in fact, in reality, it feels like it was made by somebody else, and it feels like it lives a life of its own. Um, and it was really, I mean, I did the first one 25 years ago or something like that. So in, in a sense, yes, it's, it's really from another generation. When I did the thing, uh, I really had no idea what, what, well, I clearly had some idea, but I didn't really think in terms of the future. It was very much of uh, the now. And it was really just carving a lump of uh, carving a shape out of a lump of foam, because that's how I made the first, the very first one. And I felt a little bit like, um, at the risk of sounding slightly pretentious, a little bit like Michelangelo when he was releasing David from a block of, <laughs> a block of marble. I, I don't mean, it's not so much about the analogy with Michelangelo, it's more about the analogy of releasing something mm. from a solid lump, because I could kind of see it in there, um, and it, it just needed to, to sort of come out. What is, when you think about it, has influenced the way you look at? Mm. It's, it's popular culture in general. I guess it's, a, it's art, it's film, it's music. I think any designer has to be aware of all of those things in order to be a good designer or a, or a relevant designer. But I think more than anything, it's the fact that I've traveled so much. And uh, I've lived in a lot of different countries. I'm from Australia. I, current, I live in England, but I've lived in France and I've lived in Japan. I traveled a lot as a child. Mm. Um, and the fact that, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've met lots of different people from all over the world. And I think that's given me an interesting insight. Uh, and, and one of the things about design is that it's a truly international business. You know, unlike, uh, say, the film industry or, or, or the music industry or, or the fashion industry, um, which can be sort of geographically specific. You Products know, design, are sold across all national boundaries. There's absolutely no difference. You know, you design something and it can be sold in China, it can be sold in the US, it can be sold mm -hmm. in Australia. Um, there's very little difference in that sense. The, the most important part of that is that I, I went to Sydney College of the Arts in Sydney when it was, well, you would have already gathered that with Sydney College of the Arts. <laughs> <laughs> it's well named. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. It, <laughs> it was in Balmain at the time, and I studied, studied, I mean, I love the idea of studying jewellery. I didn't really study jewellery. I kind of learned how to make jewellery, I guess and how to become a jeweler and how to become a silversmith. And this was within the sort of context of an art school. So, it, and the reason I did, the, did those things was because they were the, the least esoteric um, um, faculties that you could kind of belong to. You actually, act, you, you know, you really learned how to do stuff. Because in the, uh, in the sculpture department, in the painting department, they really didn't teach you very much. I mean, it was pretty much left up to you. I remember one of my because um, I did do sculpture for a while and, and you were pretty much left to your own devices because they fully acknowledged the fact that you really couldn't teach someone to be an artist. I mean, So I wanted to learn how to do things. I wanted to learn how to make things, not because I wanted to be a jeweler, but because I, you know, I wanted to leave knowing how to, how to do something. And nor, nor do I, did I want to be ever a jeweler. But because of the training that I'd had, it was you know, inevitable that, that I would, at some point in my career, sort of lend my hand to, to wanting to make those pieces, those types of pieces. But I think more than that, for me, it was simply a question of scale. And scale's a really big thing in my... Yeah. It's a big word in my vocabulary. It's an important and profound thing for me in, in, in my work. Is it comfortable? Well, no, not really. It, uh, it was never really intended to be comfortable, but when I was in art school, my, my sort of rule of thumb was that if it was more comfortable than a, than a bus stop, it would sort of generally qualified as being something, <laughs> something worth sitting on. But it was, it was kind of more of a sculpture, I think, mm. than, a, than a chair. Mm. The chair was just a way of... Um, it was an excuse to... to you know, to, to bring it to life. This vision of an object in my head. I mean, I had, I had the shape in my head. 
and I had the material in my. I mean, I had I had the, its sort of visual aspect. I mean, I, I had an, a, a pretty accurate idea of, of of what it looked like a globule of, of mercury or something like a, a, a seamless, smooth, shiny object. But I really didn't know how I was going to do it. You know, I had no idea how I was going to realize this on, on a technical level. How um, did you? I got this big lump of foam in the backyard of a workshop that I was, a you know, friend's workshop that I was sharing. And I, I sort of traced some lines on with a, with a giant felt tip pen and started literally hacking away at this big lump of foam with a wire brush, a very, very sort of savage wire brush, and just kind of furiously sort of hacked away. And it was just like shit all over the place, you know, foam flying around at the neighbor's house. And it felt like a kind of a monumental moment for me. Because when it was done, it was done. It just sort of appeared. And then came, you know, the challenge of having to make it look like a piece of metal. I n never really originally wanted it to be covered, covered in, in, in panels. You know, this, this was really the only way I could think of achieving something close to the effect that I'd, that I'd visualised. Then for me... Design, I think, has always been a part of my life. You know, at the age of 10 years old, I can remember sort of ripping um, a watch apart that my uncle had given me and sort of attempting to put it back together again. So I was always aware of uh, building things, really, kind of creating things. The, the evolution of digital technology with relation to design and how designers use that, how young designers are able to use that. In fact, how anyone's able to use that. You know, you don't even need to be a designer to design things. You know, you can, you can spit things out on a three-dimensional printer. I mean, my five-year-old daughter could do it. In fact, every time I try and help my daughter to sort of draw a picture or, or, or make something, I kind of get, you know, dissed. You know, it's, <laughs> she doesn't think I'm very good. Do you take a different approach at all to something that's designed or, or intended to be unique, short run, or a very small number of them, and things you know that are going to be mass produced? Yes, in, inevitably, um, there, are, there are all kinds of different approaches, and there are all kinds of different product typologies, there are all kinds of different scales, there are all kinds of different materials, there are all kinds of different technologies that you engage. But at the bottom line, it's, it's all designing. It's all the same problem-solving exercise. It's the same thought process, the same logic that you apply to all of those things, whether it's a toilet or, or the interior of, a, of an aircraft or a, or a watch or, a, um, or whatever, a telephone. So, and that's why I like design, because it, it gives me the ability to cover such a wide range of, of things. You know, people often confront me um, by saying, you know, how, how can you possibly do so many different things? And for me, it's kind of the same thing, really. It's just different scales, different materials, different processes, but it's the same thought process.